pleasure to have you folks. Sorry about the echo or reverb is if there is any. We're currently in the Legends of Poker Room. I've been mentioning it uh, briefly in a couple vlogs, but I've been hosting private games here, or organized games, I guess is the technical term. There's a smoky room in this damn place. The room is gorgeous. I'll take you guys on a brief tour of it. But uh, yeah, if you guys are ever interested and think you guys will be fun to hang around with, uh, yeah, let me know. Just hit me up on Instagram, DM me, and uh, yeah, I think it's my big blind and I have to pay the cocktail waitress and I'll be back. Yeah. Well, enjoy the episode. Should be some good fun. Before we get into the episode, I'll just let you guys know ahead of time, if you guys ever want to play in the Splash Quads, I think it's at the top of the description. It's been a ton of fun going on lately. So, without further ado, let's get in the first hand of the episode. Things are starting off hot. This first hand, I'm in the small blind. We're playing a three blind game, which is five, five, ten. I'm in for five dollars. I decide to raise out of position with a jack nine offsuit. Only Branson in the third blind decides to call. We're going off to a flop. Jack, queen, seven is a flop. Probably going to be better for my range than my opponent's calling range. I don't know who really cares that much. Let's just dive into the hand. I decided to see bet for $30. Need to go a third size seems big to make the most sense. Our opponent makes a call. We're going off to a turn card that comes the eight of clubs. Again, another good card for me. So I decided to bet here for $125. Being that there is two diamonds already in this flop and I do hold a diamond myself. It makes sense to just bet here. I think that turning my hand into a bluff makes sense sometimes, and then obviously getting a showdown makes sense other times. Branson does not waste too much time before calling, and we're off to a river card that comes the deuce of diamonds. Brings in that front door flourish, what I think I'm going to have a ton of. Considering I have a diamond, it's a great blocker, and secondly, when I go pot, or at least a big sizing on the turn, it's usually indicative of a puller range. Yeah, I decided to go pretty massive here. I decided to bet $300, putting my opponent to the test, and we have some really good table talk, so listen in. Your hero call might even be like bad. I'm probably bluffing. Honestly. Wait, what? I said if you're hero calling, your hero call might even like not even be if I had a bluff. Like he's saying you might lose hero call. Like even through my bluff. Yeah. That's funny. If I was bluffing. <laughs> I'm being 100% serious, not a mind game. I'm being genuine. <laughs> unless you're tanking, unless you're tanking with a straight, then I'm gonna be very disappointed. <laughs> I feel like we might have the same hand. What's the same hand? Queen That could be one of the hands that I was talking about that would uh, be a bluff. Like, I'd still be winning with it. If I had a bluff, I'd have that hand and it'd be hard for you to win. I thought you had like Jack-10. I don't think you have King-Queen. I guess you already said you had Queen-10, but... So after a little bit of the fun and games there, Branson does decide on making a really good hero call with Queen-10. Unfortunately, I couldn't win that hand there, but I feel like the table talk gave me a chance at at least winning. Well, didn't want to start it off in that fashion, but the game is off the rails. A ton of fun is going on. A ton of fun is being had. I feel like I've just been V-pipping 50% of hands or something insane. So let's keep it going in this very next hand where the button makes it $30 to go. I'm in the small blind with 10-9 of hearts. I think this plays better as a three bet sometimes than a call, but I end up being passively and calling. The third blind calls as well. We're going off to a flop that comes eight, four, five, two hearts. Really nice flop for our range. The most, I think, specific. I'm going to have a ton of the eights, fours, and fives in my range, uh, as well as the straight draws. Uh, all of those exist in... in in my side, I think, over anybody else's. Maybe the big blind or the third blind has it as well. Either way, ends up checking through on this flop. The turn card comes a king of hearts. We make our flush immediately. I bet $70 and the button calls. The river card comes out a four of diamonds. Doesn't change too much the board, although it does pair it. It just makes it, you know, not a whole lot scarier, I don't think. I don't think I'm ever leading a four on the turn. So I think on this river, I should be polarized. I'm either going to have a flush or air. Ace three with the ace of hearts. So I decided to bet out for a bomb of $325 going over the size of the pot. And yet again, in the second hand of the session, a lot of excitement going on. And let's hear what I have to say 
on some really fun table talk. I think you have like jacks. Yeah, like, no, you don't have jacks. No, I have better than jacks. Well, it's hard to have better than jacks, man. King Queen? King Queen? I can promise you, I didn't even notice six seven was a straight. No idea. Show me one. Um, let me see. I have to see if if I show you one, it might sway the action a little too much to like each direction. Yeah. I don't think it'd be a good idea for me to show one. If you have better than Jack, you have like King Queen. Oh yes, yeah, that's the easy boat. I have two K. Is that good? Is that good? Yeah, perfect. Yeah, I didn't see your hand. Do you even have a heart? Are you blocking? Uh, two. Oh, that's that's not that good. Trying to talk me out of it. I tried doing that last time you called, so... You did it twice in a row? <laughs> I have the nuts for sure, right? <laughs> I don't. I really don't. I do not have... To, I didn't even know that that was a straight, to be honest. If I noticed that 6-7 yeah. was there, and I was paying attention, I, I would have definitely had a different bet. Well, I could promise that much. Like I can't tell you if I would have bet more or less, but I for that, sure did not see 6-7 as a straight. Well, this, is the first, this is the first time yeah. I did. Oh, that's what as you guys can see there i feel like our table talk was able to help us out in this case our opponent ends up making a pretty good call or a pretty light call with king nine there uh can't blame him i mean he saw me bl blast it off earlier and you'll see me blast it off later at this point so i think he'd be happy with this call in the long run either way happy to drag that pot in my direction this next hand is an absolute blunder, so bear with me as there's so much to go over here. I don't think it makes it $30 to go. The button 3 bets to $125, but I did not see it, and neither did I hear the dealer announce it. She may have. I could be spacing out. I'm doing like 45 things at once here as I'm hosting the game. And at this point, you see me throw out $140. I think that I'm 3-betting the buttons open and you know making it $140 bucks over $30, but in fact, I'm just calling the $125. Obviously, if I knew that, I would have put in the easy 4-bet here to somewhere in the neighborhood of $500 to $600, really making uh, my opponent have to commit his entire stack if he does to play, decide to play, because he has somewhere in the neighborhood of $1,200 to $1,500 left. Either way, we're going heads up after the initial raiser folds to a flop that's okay as it comes ace-jack-10. Okay, because I don't have the betting lead here. This has become a very confusing situation at this point, I think, is when I realized that I'm not the person at 3-bet preflop. You made it, you made it 30. I 3-bet. I have a 3-bet to 140. Oh my god. Yeah. And I still haven't even made an action yet. What is going on? Oh, yeah, that is weird. Wait. That's that really odd. No. Oh, oh, I thought, I was like, bro, what is happening? I haven't checked, I haven't made any action. This is the weirdest shit ever. Check. I decide to check. Our opponent bets 125, and I call. The turn card comes a nine of clubs. I check call once again $275, and we're going off to a river card that comes a six of spades here. I check for the one last time. Our opponent bets $500. The question now becomes is, do I think my opponent's able to do this with a hand like ace-queen? And I think the honest answer is yes. I think ace-queen makes a ton of sense. It'd be blocking the flop straight, which is something I may have had and slow played. And two, it's a really good hand. Knowing that this is a vlog watcher, he knows that I can get pretty curious pretty light. The other interesting dynamic that I didn't take into consideration immediately was that because he knows that I was trying to 3-bet but wasn't able to because it would have had to have been a 4-bet and I didn't realize that, is that maybe he realizes that I'm actually stronger than I am, or at least stronger than a person just calling a three bet cold would be because he knows that I was actually trying to cold four bet. All of these dynamics are playing in my head. And I think that in real time, I kind of cloud that better judgment when I think, and I know that my opponent wouldn't be betting this river too light because he knows that I have a good hand because I was trying to four bet. Either way, I end up making the call pretty quickly. Our opponent shows Jack 10. So unfortunate there, I think if I was able to get a 4-bet across on the flop, or pre-flop I should say, I would have easily taken this pot down. But nonetheless, ends up happening to the best of us. Either way, moving on.
Things are moving at a rapid fire pace. We have a well, well too many hands to go over today. So let's hop right into this next one. Under the gun, I make it $30 for go with Ace-10 offsuit. Middle position, which is Rampage, who's joining the game, ready to get in the action and have some fun, decides to call. And the third blind calls as well. The flop comes out Ace-6, Queen with two clubs out there. The action ends up checking through. I think it's important to have some Aces in your checkback range. Rampage is a really good, solid, aggressive player. He's going to choose specific lines to be aggressive on. And although I am out of position against him, I think this is an okay situation with the hand as disguises top pair to play like this. He checks it back, and the turn card comes a seven of diamonds. With the action check to me once again, I think I have a pretty clear value bet here. I make it $50 to go, going somewhere in the neighborhood of half pot. Only the third blind calls, and we're going off to a river card that comes a jack of hearts. Again, doesn't change very much the board texture. The flush draw misses. I'm blocking the straight draw, which again would be a pretty precarious call on the turn. Either way, with the action checked over to me, I think it's pretty mandatory that I go for some value of $110. Our opponent thinks about it for a little bit before announcing that my ace is good and making the call. Unfortunate for Alex there as he wasn't able to get this one across for me, but Alex was a good sport about it and one of the funniest people I've ever had on my table. His cadence and monotoneness was hysterical, and I think he brought out a really fun and lively environment to the game. So shout out to you, Alex. Sorry I won this pot, but happy to win it nonetheless. I can't pretend like I'm not happy to win in the game of poker. In this next hand, early position makes it $30 to go. The cutoff and the button make the call. I find myself here in the small blind and I decide to throw out a three bet to $210 after looking down at ace queen. I think this is just a great squeeze candidate. I don't think we need to go much further than that. Unfortunately, it gets back to the initial raiser who decides to throw in the four bet to $600, leaving himself about $600 behind. With the action back on me, although I'm not hating my life, I'm not loving my life, but at the end of the day, my hand is really strong and I think our opponent can have things that are out, you know, outside of aces and kings and queens i think our opponent can definitely have tens and jacks i haven't mentioned to this point but we're playing a, a, a bunch of really interesting games the jack four game is on which means if somebody wins there is a bounty collected from each and every player of 25 dollars that adds up pretty quickly to over 200 dollars in bounties not only that but we're playing the show one game so every time somebody wins a pot they have to show one card and if they don't they're penalized by having to show both cards a ton of crazy actions going on and building because of it. Bomb pots are flowing. The action is insane. So I was like, frick it. Let's just get the action going. I ended up just five bet jamming all in with my holding. I will actually say that I have a pretty uh, good read on this opponent. A uh, live read specifically on his mannerisms, his cadence, and his pace of how he threw out the bets. I have a pretty solid read that our opponent does not have a really strong holding. Sure, maybe it's a one-time thing, but I was pretty pretty confident in this situation. Our opponent immediately says this is not a good situation for himself, and he ends up exposing Jack for offsuit. This is where things get a little confusing, so bear with me. This is a first-timer to my game, and he's obviously playing stakes that he's never played or comfortable playing, and I think we figured that out as the session game along. At this point, I tell him that, hey, I tell him what I have, and I say that, you know, out of kindness... I'll run in the board twice because he said he was going to fold. I said, look, we'll run the board twice. I don't have a pair. You're not drawing dead. You can call off, you know, the rest of your stack. And it's technically the right thing to do in this specific case. So we run the board out twice. I cut him a break here. I think I do this too often, but I think this is what happens when you end up becoming the host of the game. I'm just trying to make the environment fun. My goal is not to make anybody go broke every single week. I think that'd be... I don't know, maybe I'm just a bad host. Maybe I just really want people to have fun or whatever. But we end up running the board out twice. And on the first board, he ends up turning a four. And on the second board, we end up turning an ace, which draws or leaves him drawing dead. So either way, a really long explanation. I'm sorry about that. But moving on to the next hand. In the next hand, there's an early position limp to $10. I find myself isolating with the old jack four of clubs here. As you guys know, the bounty game is going. I make it $50 to go. The button calls, and then the third blind throws in a 3-bet to $160. This gentleman goes by the name of Brian, and he's really good, obviously, at the game. I think in this situation, I am in position, and I do have the bounty. I think that I it'd be a little bit bad if I 4-bet as a bluff and get jammed on, I lose my equity. At least my hand is suited, I guess. It's only saving grace, and the 3-bet's not even for that big. I end up making the call, and the flop comes queen, 6, 3, rainbow. With the action starting off on our opponent, he decides to throw out a C-bet here, 
Although floating with Jack High is pretty stupid, especially when it's not even an overcard, I do have a couple of back doors, so why not? And also, the bounty's still out there. I'm playing for it. I gotta get the action going. The turn card comes a deuce of clubs. At this point, you might be thinking I'm rigging the deck and the river's gonna come a club, but I'll save you guys the drama by letting you know what happens. On the turn, our opponent does a very classic trying to show weakness by slamming the chips down in a overly aggressive fashion, as you guys can see. No offense, Brian. I, I really mean none, but this is a pretty clear tell of strength. And I think at this point, my best bet is to just try to get the money in the middle and run it twice. I only have about $900 in my stack total. So we have a flush draw. We have a gutter ball. It's time to just get the money in the middle. I end up making the all-in. Our opponent snap calls. We agreed we're not two boards. The first one comes a queen of spades. Our opponent snap says that he has queen. We now realize that we're up against it. The second one comes out, he has a boat as he fills up as it comes as six of diamonds. Unfortunate for us there, we did everything we could, everything we could to penalize the table with a jack four. Unfortunately, the deck did not cooperate, but uh, neither did myself. So good hand to you, Brian. Unfortunate there. But as you guys know, we're here to make the game fun. And this session would be boring if I just waited around for aces, right? By this point of the session, I think I might just be on absolute mayhem mode. There's a straddle on here. Under the gun makes it $60 to go. Plus one makes a call. The small blind calls as well. I looked on a king jack offsuit. And if I looked on anything even remotely squeezable, I'm going to do it. Here in the big blind, I decided to squeeze queen jack offsuit at $300. Only the plus one player calls, which again, if you're just calling, you're probably going to have a weak hand. So with that being in my mind, the flop comes out ace, six, three with two spades. This can be a board that's really dry and better for my range than my opponent's range. And if anything, he's going to have like an ace-x that's pretty weak with the action on me. I down bet at 175, looking to size up for a pot size jam on the turn. Our opponent ends up making the call, and the turn card comes a deuce of diamonds. On this specific turn card, again, it just doesn't help my opponent in very many ways. I just had a jam for $620, which is what our opponent has remaining. He goes deep into the tank before eventually saying that he's got a psy call it off, which he does. The river card is inconsequential as i'm probably drawing dead as we find out pretty quickly we are as our opponent shows ace four here so put him on the right range our opponent just could make the big fold either way no one to blame beside ourselves let's keep this rolling i'm stuck so much i can't even comprehend i don't know it's not much to talk about but i got a battle back it's not looking good though at least ethan came by so that's good shout out to him and branson as well shout out to everyone that came I have to use the restroom, so let's go do that. I can't bring you in there. So as you guys can tell from the mid-session update, things are going my way. I believe at this point, I'm already in the game for $7,000. And let that sink in. There is a 2K cap. So we are in for absolute piles. Let's look to turn things around. And this next hand is a start. The straddle is on a $20. The cutoff makes it $50 to go. The action's on me. In the big blind, I make the call with 6, 7 of clubs. The third blind calls as well, and the flop comes pretty good as it comes 8-5 deuce with two diamonds. With the action checked over to the initial raiser, he decides to bet two-thirds here for $100. Pretty big sizing. I don't know what this is indicative of, but what I do know is, is I'm calling. I think a raise does make sense, but against a big sizing, I'd rather just play a little more passive. Only I make the call, and we're going off to a turn card that comes with seven of diamonds. Does bring in that front door flush, which is a little worrisome, but it does involve a little bit of a pair situation for myself. At this point, I check it over to my opponent, who bets three hundred dollars. I don't think I can get away from it just yet. Our opponent has definitely shown the ability to get gangster with it, been really putting me to the absolute test at this point. So I end up just making a call, mostly taking a stand against him, and we're going off to a river card that comes a four of diamonds. I know I'm proved to a straight, but there is a four liner to a flush out there, which is kind of a nightmare. I check it over to my opponent once again, and he is not stopping the betting train. He bets $700. The action's back on me, and I'm kind of in a really hurtful spot. On one hand, although our opponent has been getting pretty crazy, the one thing I will say is that he's had some really decent hands at Showdown. He's never had absolute air. The problem is, Mello is capable of to have bluffs here and he's probably the only person at this table that i can even consider calling this river bet with i think that my hand is actually really strong and even in some cases where he could be bluffing with the better hand it's a little hard to do so when i do have a straight here so if i'm not going to be calling with a flush on this river i need to be calling with some hands and a straight makes sense i think so i end up throwing in the hero call our opponent says 
good hand and shows king nine offsuit. So absolutely massive set of cojones from Melo. Props to him. There's literally nobody in this game that would have done that outside of me and him. And it's really awesome that he did that. Unfortunate for him, he ran into the one idiot that has absolutely no respect for ranges, I suppose. Alrighty, like I said, by this point in the session, the absolute, it, the, the game is absolute madness. Everything is really bursted through. If there was like a dam holding the game together, it's been exploded by this point. The village is flooding. Things are going absolutely haywire. And this next time is a perfect example. The straddle is on a $20. Middle position makes it 60 Button player, which is Mellow, calls. I'm here in the big blind with pocket tens here. Absolute mandatory three bet. I don't want to be flatting with these hands in the blinds, especially against the players that I think are capable of getting pretty crazy. Post flop, I end up making a three bet, pretty sizable one to $300. And this razor folds, and then the action gets back to the button, which is Mellow, who decides to back raise jam to 1K. I'm never folding. I end up making the call. We get to run out the board twice. The first board comes out ace, four, eight, seven, nine. And the second board comes out queen, six, four, deuce, three. Feels like I can at least hopefully win one of these. I show my hand. Melo nods his head before exposing his. And unfortunately, he doesn't even have an ace or a queen or a pair or even a suited hand. He has five, six offsuit. So the old call back raise all in really got him there. <laughs> Good hand to Melo. Honestly, he's been putting me to the test today and the entire table for that matter. So props to him. Good hand to you, Melo. Unfortunately, we get scooped there against six high, but at the end of the day, that is the winner. On this next hand, the recording is catching up once we get to the flop. So let me fill you in. The straddle is on a $20. I look down at pocket threes here from the cutoff. I race to $60. The action gets to the straddler, who is Melo. He decides to three bet to $300. The action's back onto me against a really specific, like a massive sizing like this. I think we can definitely look to set mine. And again, Melo is a very capable player that I think is able to have things that are not better than pocket queens only. So I end up making the call. The flop comes out 10, 10, 7. All things considered, it's not the worst flop in the world. Obviously, we can get counterfeited, which is a problem. And I have to at least call once. At least that's what I thought until my opponent just open rips 3x the size of the pot. $2,000 going straight into the middle. Yep, you heard that right. I am deep, deep into the tank in just utter belief and, and utter confusion. I don't even know what words I can use to describe this. The adjectives are really just fading at this point. My grammar is already limited, and the worst part is, without the availability of a thesaurus or a dictionary, I'm incapable of finding the words to describe how I feel right now. I'm throwing up in my mouth pretty much. I don't know what to do. Maybe some people just think this is a snap fold, but against Melo, a very capable player who's definitely capable of getting crazy, as you guys have seen to this point, I don't know what to do. I just don't think he's ever jamming aces and kings. He might. He might really do that. But I just don't have a long enough player history with him to have a perfect answer. And the problem I'm having now is that if he's not jamming for value, what bluffs does he have? And I think he has a ton of really random air balls. But the other scary thing that's coming through my mind is, one, I can get counterfeit. And two, he could just be doing this with pocket fours, pocket sixes, pocket fives, and I'm just dead anyways. This is one of the toughest spots I've ever been in in poker. And granted, it's a massive shout out to Melo for even putting me in this spot, trying to hold my stuff together before eventually I decide. On making the call, 3x jam. We're here to gamble. We're here to get some action going. We decide to run off the board twice. The first one comes out an eight of clubs and then the jack of clubs. It's a pretty much the nut load run out for us as it comes a flush and some straights. The second board runs out jack high and five high. And then we hear these words. King high. There is literally no better feeling in poker when you're all in with thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars in the middle and your opponent saying the words king high i am absolutely blown away by the development i'm super happy with the way it came out obviously for us again massive massive shout out for the heart that Melo showed obviously i don't think anybody's willing to do this outside of himself so give the roses where they're due and at least he knows next time he can do it with aces and he'll get one idiot willing to call him with threes as you guys can see the swings of this game can be absolutely astronomical we are currently down, I think, somewhere in the neighborhood of two and a half to 3,000. So we're definitely battling back. And in this next hand, we're looking to continue that 
streak of wins. We're playing five-handed at this point, and at this point, the game has got up to 10, 20, 40, and the button makes it $120 to go. The button player has been super relentless and aggressive by this point. With the action on me in the small blind, we look down at Queen Jack offsuit. In a five-handed game, I think this plays as good as a three bet, so I make it $400 to go. Action back on him. He decides to make the call. We're going off to a flop that is just... It, things turned around pretty quickly. Queen, Queen, 10 with two spades and a diamond. With the action on me, I decide to see bet for a larger sizing here. If I ever see bet on these board textures, I think I'd rather go for a large sizing or no sizing by just checking. So that's what we end up doing. I make it $600 to go. Our opponent makes a call. We're going off to a turn card that is pretty whack as it comes to four spades. Not fun because it brings in the front door flush as well as beyond the fact that our opponent doesn't always have a flush here. It will always kill or slow down the action. I decide to play a little bit unorthodox and just checking over to my opponent, allowing him to blast off with his bluffs and also looking to control the size of the pot. With the action on him, he ends up betting $750, which is a little bit on the interesting sizing here. I think going somewhere in the neighborhood of 40%. We like his bet a lot. Unfortunate for him, he's running into it. I end up making the call, looking to get bailed out on the river, and that it does, as it comes to four of diamonds. Again, great chance we still had the best hand either way. There's even some chances that we had the best hand, and now we get counterfeited on the river and have to chop. I decide to check it over to my opponent once again, as he decides to check it back. Unfortunate for us, we show it, and we're definitely going to win that hand. All right, let's see if we can get unstuck here. Slowly but surely, we are getting our way out of the hole. Moving on to this next hand here, there's a $40 straddle on, which I find myself in. The small blind decides to make it $140 to go with the action on to me. We look down at Pocket Kiron's Pocket Kings. Let's go. Eight hours into the session, we have found a way to find some patience. I decided three bet here to $420, going right around 3x. We can even go a little smaller, I think, in position with a hand this strong. It goes back of a chore opponent who goes deep into the tank before eventually deciding on jamming all in for about four thousand dollars whenever folding let's cut to the chase i end up making the call here he asks if we can run it twice i happily oblige as this is a pretty massive pot our opponent pretty quickly says that he has ace king suited we show our hand as well and we're off to a run out and let's watch in amazement well the first one comes out pretty non-scary as we flop a set here the second one comes a little more interesting as he flops a flush draw. The turn is a brick, looking to fade all aces, all spades, and the river comes. An ace from space. Oh no, a massive pot, a massive pot that could have been shipped my way. Down to somewhere in the neighborhood of 20 to 30 some odd percent going to that river. Nonetheless, it could have easily happened the other way. But fair is fair. Hopefully someday I'm on the other side of a cooler like this and I can get there as well. Either way, super anticlimactic um, to just lock up the first one so fast and to get painfully ripped out of my hands the second board. Either way, the set has been amazing so far. We got one more banger to go over now. In this next hand, we're playing four-handed here, playing 2040. The button makes it $100 to go. The small blind makes a three bet to $420. I find myself in the big blind with King Jack offsuit. I think this plays definitely better as a four bet than a call, but I am in position against the three better, so I end up just cold calling the three bet. Don't like this very much, to be quite frank, but eight hours, nine hours into the session, I'm going to cut myself a little slack. I don't play that well when we get deep, and for the most part, we've been playing okay. The button decides to fold, and we're going off to a flop that's very, very, very kind to us as it comes Jack, four, deuce, rainbow. Our opponent C bets for 300, going three or a third pots. We have an easy just call here. The turn comes a seven of hearts. Doesn't change much the board texture with the action now checked over to me. I decide to see bet or take over the betting lead, excuse me, for $600. Our opponent thinks about it for quite some time before eventually deciding on making a call. The river card comes a seven of diamonds. And once our opponent checks to me, I have a massive thing that I wanted to get across here. I even wrote it down in bold notes about what I'm feeling in the moment. I think at this point, eight, nine hours into the session, I'm battling a ton of demons. I'm telling myself that if I bet here that our opponent only has better and that our opponent will never call us off light or with less here, I'm going back and forth saying, oh, maybe he has queens, kings, aces. This guy's just slow playing me. What if I get raised? I think logically thinking about a hand and trying to recreate it and make a range for our opponent makes way more sense than just 
telling myself that there's a bunch of monsters and a boogeyman handi- hiding under my bed. After a long talk with myself, and you can see here from the video, the tank is actually pretty long before I decided to do anything. I realized that if I get raised, we'll cross the bridge when we get to it, but I've got a bed for value. There's a bunch of holdings that I think our opponent can definitely have that is inferior to mine. And with all that being said, I'm stuck in the game anyway, so let's try to get out of Stuckville. I make a $1,200 bet. I don't want to go big here. I will not allow, allow myself to get called by worse. Going half pot seems to make sense. Our opponent goes deep into the tank before eventually deciding. On a call, we show our hand, and it is, in fact, good. The gentleman in this hand was kind enough later on to tell me that he ended up calling me down with the ace high. So as you guys can see there, putting that final piece of the puzzle together and realizing that I can't be scared of every little thing that goes across like this, considering how meh we played for the session, to get out of Stuckville feels amazing. The game was absolute absolutely off the walls was a ton of fun the game ended up wrapping up at four in the morning it was absolutely ridiculous but let's throw it over to me a little bit after to talk about the session enjoying ourselves some monday night football but as you guys know we've got to go over the session you guys saw last night or it, it's the same video but you get what i'm trying to say man there is almost too much to go over for the for the mind to comprehend it was a, it was a really really crazy session i played i think for nine to t nine to ten hours so we were playing until like three or four in the morning and just found a way to battle all the way back and ended up breaking better than even we actually made some money on the session we were into the session for $10,000 and out for $11,101, I think. Let's double check though. It's important to have these numbers right. Yes, the number was right. I'm happy with the way it turned out. Like I said, all things considered, things didn't seem to be going to my way, ended up battling back. So we're proud of that. These games are really off the rails. And I think you guys will see as we continue to post these private game sessions. Once again, if you guys are interested at all with ever playing with me, either if it's on the Splash Squads, if you guys want to play with me in the virtual felt, if not, you guys can play with me in the real felt. If you guys are interested in playing 5510, let me know. All you have to do is DM me at this Instagram, which is my Instagram, and we can talk shop, figure out if there's ever a time you can play. Uh, either way, I've got to go watch this game and then go to work and then yeah well you, who cares either way thank you guys so much for watching this episode it means a great great deal with me thank you guys so much for the unwavering super great support in the last video that we had at the home game and hopefully we have some uh, upswing stuff because that'll be really exciting either way we'll see you guys in the next one stay happy so more importantly guys we're gonna get the tables deuces